Hi, welcome to the Canadian City and Southern Model Railroad. Today's video, I'm going to build a crossing and then test it. Over the years, I've built lots of switches, but I've never actually built a diamond or a crossing. So this is going to be a new experience for me. So here's what I've come up with. First of all, I'm going to need a pattern so that I can get all my angles correct. So what I have done is I've taped down a piece of flex track over the wooden ties that will be my diamond. Now this is the standard gauge portion. I tape down this piece of paper on both ends so that I can fold it down. And I'm going to take a pencil and run it along the top of the rail. Now I'll fold this back. And remove the standard gauge flex track. Now I've taped down my last little piece of narrow gauge flex track, lining it up so where the ties are even on the ends. I'll fold my piece back over and it's registered because I haven't removed the tape. And I'll draw my narrow gauge rails. And now I've got a pattern to build my diamond. Now I can darken up those by taking a ruler and darkening the lines and then I can make copies as many as it turns out that I'll need so that I can solder right on top of it. I've copied my pattern that I drew on the layout and I'm ready to start building my crossing. I'm going to do the insulated edges first. Now I've super glued a little piece of note card on here and trimmed it after I filed the angle. And I filed the angle on this piece down here and I've glued a little piece of note card underneath it. Now I'm going to join the two. I have cut all the running rails for my diamond crossing. They're all been cut slightly long so that I can tie them in to the switches and track that come into them. This will be a narrow gauge point switch. This will be a narrow gauge code 55 stub switch. The transition from 70 to 55 will be here. This will simply go into the standard gauge and this will go into a dual gauge standard to dual switch. This rail, this rail, this rail, and this rail will always be red wire on my track bus. This rail, this rail, this rail, and this rail will always be black wire on my track bus. So all that will have to be soldered up appropriately. Here and here are the two sections that are insulated at the points that I did in the previous section of the video. All four of these rails have been cleaned up underneath so that they can solder well. The angles have been cut and everything's been positioned in place. The flange way here is slightly narrower than the flange way here because this will be for narrow gauge wheels, this will be for standard gauge wheels. 
and I check this against the NMRA gauges. So everything's taped down and lined up and we're ready to solder. The little brass plate had a thin coat of soldering paste and underneath here and here on those two rails a thin shim of note card was super glued to keep everything level and so that the height will line up with the points that have been insulated here and here. The inside or red rail portion has been cleaned all up and the excess brass has been removed. This had to be done very carefully to prevent it from breaking here in the middle. So it's now ready to be attached to the layout. Well, not quite. These ends are still a little bit long. I could trim them to match my pattern on the paper, and that's probably pretty accurate. But once this side's finished soldering, and the points have been ground down a little bit to where they line up and they're all taped in place, now I have to make these two pieces. And these pieces are long, due to the fact that I want to double check this on a fresh piece of paper to make sure that everything really is gauged in case these lines aren't perfectly gauged. Now I'm going to clean up the bottoms of these two pieces. Going to get all of the weathering off so that they can solder good. And so that they can glue down to the little pieces of note card shims. scraping these with the knife on the back part of the blade with the knife held at an angle so that I don't wear the blade out and so that it just scrapes off the weathering and doesn't cut into the rail. Put just a tiny little bit of super glue. and mash that down tight. Against the note card material. And do the same thing. 
você fez. Now I'll wait for that glue to set up for a few seconds. And then I'll trim those off. These have been trimmed off now. And on the other end, they're now ready to have their angles grinded and to be measured for their flange widths. And we'll do the final grinding on this. To closely match the angle here. And I'll finish this up with a little file to get it just right. But it'll still be too long on the end. All four pieces of rail on the inside or black rail have been taped down and I'm going to double check the flange widths on the standard gauge and on the narrow gauge before I apply the solder. The soldering iron is heating up now. I've taped down a piece of rail along one of the lines on my pattern and the reason I have left these a little long and didn't cut them is because I didn't trust that the width of these lines would be exactly correct. Turns out it's not. So what I have done in order to cut the flange way is I've checked my gauge here and here and then check the width of the flange way and ground it to be exactly the right angle and width apart. I'll now remove this rail and do the same thing on the narrow gauge and then repeat the process for the other side of the diamond. And that will put all the running rails finished. Well, I'm down to my final flange way to grind. Now I'm going to hold my cutting disc parallel with the opposite rail. Can only do this a little bit at a time because it gets quite hot and you got to let go. Now I'll check the gauge on both sides. And then I'll check the flange width. And it's still just a little narrow. So I'll repeat this process up close without the camera in the way until I get it just right. Well, the rails have been spiked down on my crossing. But as I tested it, I noticed that the paper shim points were allowing the wheels to drop down. So I've replaced it on this side with a 500s, 0500s piece of styrene in the middle and two pieces on the bottom. So now I need to do the same thing on this end. So 
So I'm simply going to take this piece out. And I'll respike it later. So I put a 0500 styrene shim under here and I've sanded it down to be a quite a bit thinner. And on this piece, I've done the same thing here, but on the end, I've put another styrene shim and I've left it the full 0500 and I've extended it out past the end of the metal rail and filed the end even with the top of the rail so that there's a fine point on the styrene. Well, the running rails on my diamond are nearly complete. But this rail has just been spiked down loosely. And I'm going to slide it forward until it contacts the piece of styrene here. Now it's farther back than even on the ends, which is good because that'll prevent it from shorting out when standard gauge wheels run through. Now I need to double check my gauge right at this point. Then I'll put a dab of glue here and spike the very end and tighten down these spikes here. And then the running rails are done. And I'll need to trim here and here to make sure that the trucks don't grab those points on the narrow gauge and come off the rails. Once everything's running smoothly, then I will come back and add guardrails, which will mostly be for appearance. The running rails are all spiked down. And the insulated points have been checked with this old truck that I've installed some metal wheel sets in. And I ran it very slowly over each of these and tested it with the gauge and with the meter to make sure that everything was engaged and no way that the metal wheels could short this out. So now I'm ready for guardrails. All the guardrails are in place now and I had to do quite a bit of filing and cutting and grinding to make all the different gauges and eras of engines I've got get through the diamond smoothly. Now these guardrails are just regular Code 70 rail that I filed the base down a little bit but I had to trim the ends and notch the ends so that they didn't make electrical contact with any of the running rails. And that was a bit tricky. I had originally planned to print, 3D resin print, some Code 70 rail, but that proved to be pretty flexible for the longer guardrails on the outside. However, they work just fine for the four guardrails in the middle of the diamond. So now it's all been tested and it's ready to go. A narrow gauge Canadian City and Southern train is waiting for a standard gauge train all the way from Oklahoma to cross through the diamond so that the narrow gauge can proceed ahead.
Well, thanks for watching. Feel free to subscribe, and I'll see you next time. Maybe some more scenery. It's about time.